Tamke tukje şakje rizu çun jenji mitu dütje bunjam ba serje lumbo tabur jibe ku şakje jal bhushabla çaksalo I was uh, requested by Vihara Indonesian Buddhism uh, Bodhgaya Foundation. This uh, Indonesian Bodhgaya Foundation uh, uh, is organizing a, a very important uh, function or uh, uh, event uh, which is focusing on uh, virtues light of sangha i personally must say this is very timely because uh, your focus is on giving solaces as well as guidance to those individuals and communities throughout your country and also throughout India and world over who are affected by corona virus This pandemic caused so much suffering for individuals and communities. These sufferings are not only limited to inconvenience, but so many people lost their own life. That means everyone is somebody's part of their family. Parents, children, spouses, relatives, acquaintances and uh, so many things. example in sangha community teachers students disciples patrons and uh, dharma brothers and sisters so in this uh, situation it is uh, natural for people to feel the loss of course but point here is the vicious light of sangha it should shine especially on those occasions and also upon those individuals and families and communities the sangha by definition is following the teaching of lord buddha sangha mahasangha and what buddha taught us 2600 years ago is a fresh today and that essence we receive from our abbots masters gurus teachers and that way we become sangha
Situations like this, conditions like this, world is overwhelmed by pandemic from the richest to the poorest, from the most powerful to the powerless, for, from most learned to the uh, uneducated. For everyone, is affected. So in this event, terrible event, but this terrible event which is now about one year, in some places over one year. And now in this then virtuous light of Sangha must shine. If not now, then when? If not here, then where? So, it should shine in so many ways, not only one way. according to the Lord Buddha's teaching. The compassion is one way. Love is another way. Kindness is another way. Wisdom is another way. And knowledge is another way. And generosity is another way. And being kind and helpful and serving is another way. So on and so forth. Now make it short. Whichever way we can assist those who are affected by this pandemic, we should assist them and make their suffering less. And places where the pandemic did not affect badly, then do our best to keep it that way so that it will not be affected. But places where it is really become a daily occurrences, then that tragedy we should do our best to minimize its effect on people, on animals on natural resources. And that is for now. And that must be based on, first of all, warm-heartedness. You should have warm heart. You should feel for other person. When somebody is suffering, you should be able to feel for that person. When somebody is in danger, we should feel for that person. To protect them, help them, so on and so forth. Not a cold heart. Cold heart means not caring for others, no concern for others. Others' pain you don't feel. And feeling others' pain doesn't mean you should have pain, but it involves wisdom, warm heart is outcome 
of wisdom. Very simple wisdom, very basic wisdom, such as knowing nobody likes to suffer, just like I don't like to suffer, you don't like to suffer. The same way every single living creature, every single person, they don't like to suffer. So when we have that knowledge, then that knowledge becomes wisdom. And when we are able to uh, translate that wisdom into our day-to-day -day action, then that becomes how a warm-hearted person act and behave. When this kind of uh, uh, predicament we face, if we are only concerned about ourselves, regardless of others, then the warm-heartedness is not there. So that way to have a warm heart is very important. Then out of warm-heartedness, caring-heartedness, heart then compassion and love and uh, uh, generosity and uh, kindness and caring, all of this will manifest. Many times it is not easy to Believe, but it is true. We care not enough. It becomes habit not to care. Everything just pass by. Like you are standing on a train station and one train comes Passengers come out, passengers go in and then leave. Another train comes, passengers come out, passengers go in and leave. The platform become empty, full, empty, full. And you don't observe anything. You don't observe how many of these people are happy, how many of them are not happy, any of them having any problem, any of them carrying too much so that their body is really affected by the weight of what they are carrying, any of them look hungry, they look thirsty, any of them look lost. So all these kind of things happening, but when we don't care, we just sit there and we see everything at the same time we don't see anything. So if we don't see, then how can we know? And if we don't know, then how can we care? If we don't care, then how can we assist others? So these things are interconnected. Lord Buddha taught 45 years after his enlightenment until Paranirvana. In this, he always taught about kindness in many forms, in many ways in great details, but kindness. And this 
kindness is coming from being mindful, being aware. For example, in Vinaya, Buddha taught us to restrain from negative activities. Activities that will harm ourselves and activities that will harm others mentally, physically and spiritually. And we keep that in our mind and with mindfulness and awareness we maintain. Then we reach Arhathut. After many years of unwavering dedication, we attain Arhathut. That's why we have so many Arhat during the time of Buddha and also after the Buddha's Paranirvana. And then Buddha taught about Bodhicitta, caring for others more than where you care for yourself. You sacrifice, you sacrifice your own comfort for the sake of others and use that time, use that energy and use that material to make others' life better. So that is coming out of compassion, bodhicitta, loving-kindness, impartiality. So in this, as you know, first our mind and our body and our speech has to be calm. If our mind is not calm, body speech cannot be calm. If our body speech cannot be calm, our mind cannot be calm. So when body speech and mind is calm, then it becomes stable. And stable mind and calm mind is clear. The clarity will be the base for further development. First thing which will manifest out of the clarity is clear perception. Clear perception. For example, in Lord Buddha's teaching, everything is impermanent. When we have a clear mind, we can see that. Every moment is impermanent. Everything is impermanent. Then, after that, what will be the outcome of that? That knowledge will transform further into deeper wisdom. Therefore, our grasping and our attachment to anything becomes naturally, naturally transformed so that we will never become somebody who will indulge in anything who will t take advantage of anyone and anything and who will not become obsessed about anything, who will have equanimity and contentment. And that wisdom will come from seeing everything clearly 
as everything is impermanent. At the same time, then Buddha also taught everything is interdependent manifestation. Yes, everything is impermanent, but impermanent continues. And when it is continuing, then all aspect of samsaric manifestations will continue. Something unpleasant will happen, manifest. Something pleasant also manifest. And something which is not unpleasant, not pleasant, just neutral, also will manifest. And these things affect us and affect others in so many ways. Now, at this stage, then your wisdom help you to not get attracted by pleasant things and not develop aversion towards unpleasant things and not be dull and stupid when something is neither pleasant or non-unpleasant. So that way, then every moment, every experience becomes meaningful because awareness is there, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, no attachment, no aversion, and no ignorance, always clear. So when this clarity continues, then what will manifest from it is like the light will manifest from the sun. So first basic love, kindness, compassion, joy, that will manifest. But that manifestation will become impartial. And that impartiality manifestation then further develops into clarity and sincerity and ability. Because when you are clear, that's one step. But clearness with compassion and love and kindness and warm heartedness, then it becomes sincerity. You can be very clear and unsincere. But no, you become clear and sincere. And clarity and sincerity together is very powerful. So there, that power manifests ability. Every living creature, human of course, but even non-humans like animals, when their mother is clear and sincere for their offspring, they will manifest how to raise that little infant and how to protect that little infant and how to train that little infant. 
and raise them to become a mature being. Whether it is a bird, whether it is a tiger, whether it is a lion, whatever. And human being, of course, does it very well. We know how much mother cares. Of course, father cares as well, but mother really have to take care of the child by giving her milk in first place and keeping the child warm by her body so that child's digestion, blood circulation, everything functions cell by cell. And that comes out of compassion and love, which comes out of clarity and sincerity, that power. Nobody have to teach a wild animal how to take care of their baby. It comes from within because of clarity and sincerity. Now, as a Buddhist, as a Sangha, that clarity manifests as a virtuous light because of sincerity. And that sincerity is taught in a second teaching of the Buddha, which he gave in Rajgir, as the teaching of emptiness, Shunyata. So, everything is happening relatively, but ultimately nothing is happening. Therefore, everything that is happening to everyone, inclu including coronavirus, is an interdependent manifestation because there is no such thing as the ultimate coronavirus. It is relative. It is impermanent. It lasted for one year now and it will soon become a past event. Not happy event, but difficult event. So we will overcome this very soon. But our mindfulness and awareness with sincerity and clarity continue because until the last sentient being reach the Buddhahood, there will be all kind of interdependent manifestation. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Bad like this pandemic and good like the wonderful days that we had in our life mm -hmm. many times days, weeks, years, decades, wonderful, peaceful, happy. So all of that we have to be able to keep with good and clear wisdom I. That is the light, virtuous light of Sangha. May it shine to overcome the present pandemic, at the same time, may it shine in the future to prevent any unpleasant, any conditions of suffering.
from manifesting. Nothing comes out of nothing. Everything is interdependent manifestation. And this particular sickness also interdependent manifestation. As entire world is clearly aware the source of this particular pandemic is coming from eating certain food in the wrong way. And that is because of lack of clarity and lack of sincerity. I make a last comment. Very simple. When you eat food, you should at least be sincere for yourself. I eat this food so that I will be healthy and I will not get sick and it is good for my health. That much sincerity, that much clarity have to be there. But when we unfortunately lose that sincerity, that clarity for some time, then something like this happens. We can't blame anybody. It is our own doing. Cause and conditions. The cause and conditions come together, then something like this happens. So that time in that wet market where certain food was sold and people ate it and not properly prepared, uh, ate it to, of course, make themselves healthy. That must be deep there in their uh, motivation. But somehow missed that and just ate it without any clarity, without any sincerity. Then the food which is supposed to make you healthy become food that made you unhealthy. Not only that, it endangered your life and it endangered other people's life. Then everybody thought that something happened somewhere. But quickly it spread throughout the globe. Within the Earth's atmosphere, it has circulated and no one is spared. Everyone is affected. Many, many, many millions got sick and many, many hundreds of thousands of people died. Many millions are infected and got sick. And around 8 billion human beings are in quarantine and locked down and financial and emotional and educational and administrative and all kind of disruptions are so big so that it affected the entire humanity like nothing in our memory. So through the blessing of Buddha, the virtuous light of Sangha shine, not only 
in the heart of Sangha, but in the heart of every human being on earth for the benefit of all sentient beings. Not just human beings, but all mother sentient beings. Jinna dewa tso sung wo pende namka cha parishu. Duna dunghar dagi kur kowa dunghar je jam so tong parishu. Buddha bless you, Buddha bless you, Buddha bless you all.